Ocean's role in uh, climate is a uh, very broad topic, um, but we will uh, give it a brief introduction here and then come back to it in uh, various uh, time scales uh, with specific uh, roles of the ocean. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, uh, with the global warming itself, more than 90% of the excess energy is taken up by the ocean. And we already learned in our dynamics that uh, ocean can take down heat uh, in the deep uh, and bottom water formations and keep it away for hundreds, if not thousands of years. But they also, oceans can also take down uh, carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. Uh, the question then becomes uh, how does the change in climate itself affect the ocean's ability to take up heat and carbon dioxide. But on shorter time scales at monsoon, El Nino, Pacific Decadal Oscillation and all these climate modes, uh, most of them tend to be coupled. El Nino is one of the strong coupled modes uh, where the ocean and the atmosphere talk to each other very closely and what happens depends on how they talk to each other. And there are similar modes of variability in the Indian and Atlantic oceans, which we will mention briefly. So the ocean is a net source of CO2 in some places and there are places where it's uh, taking down CO2. Overall, ocean takes up uh, I think maybe 25% of the carbon emissions which is uh, critical because if with the heat and the carbon that it takes up uh, it modulates global warming uh, greatly okay so these are the time scales that we talked about uh, sinking in the Labrador and North Atlantic uh, Ross and Weddell seas and the circulation in the deep ocean conversion back to surface water back to the North Atlantic and the Southern Ocean through uh, the Indonesian seas and so on uh, takes a long time several hundred uh, to several thousand years. Indian Ocean is a faster uh, meridional overturning because it's a, a shorter ocean with the north uh, closed off by the Asian subcontinent. Okay. Um, over longer time scale we'll see briefly some examples of the continents moving and changing ocean configurations and affecting where the upwelling happens, how that affected uh, evolution of life itself, uh, how continents move and created uh, these regional seas as well as the mountains in uh, the a a South Asian region for example and set in the monsoon just about 10 million years ago so that's a fairly new phenomena that affected vegetation uh, grazers uh, and so on and so forth okay so ocean has always played a role uh, ocean also has a strong seasonality as we know uh, if you look at the tropics the, the seasonality is fairly weak and the stratification tends to be strong because the surface gets warmer water column gets stabilized and uh, this actually shows up as uh, lack of nutrients and low productivity in the oceans except in the very strong upwelling regions okay if you look at the mid latitudes there is a fairly strong seasonality because the fall winter months cooling happens at the surface and the thermocline is chewed down and the stratification almost disappears and as the spring win uh, summer months come along surface re-stratifies and you get uh, a fairly strong thermocline although not as strong as uh, the um, tropics okay there are lots of details here uh, depending on how deep the mixed layer gets in one winter and then uh, the next uh, uh, summer stratification and winter may re-entrain the water that was in the mixed layer in the previous winter so there are ideas like re-emergence so the surface uh, temperature, air-sea interactions and so on can be affected by uh, these kinds of processes. Polar latitudes do have a seasonality depending on how far north uh, you go 
they get completely mixed down uh, in the winter months and uh, during the summer, spring summer months uh, when you get uh, let's say 24 hours of daylight and so on you do get stratification with some warming depends on ice cover, depends on many things but nonetheless there is seasonality at pretty much all latitudes but it just depends on how strong or how weak they are so it's stronger in the mid latitudes than the tropics and the uh, polar latitudes uh, for different reasons so for this section uh, so far uh, we have said earth is a sphere so more energy is received uh, per unit area in low latitudes and this leaves combined with the albedo for uh, and the outgoing long wave uh, to energy loss in the high latitudes, energy gain in the low, low latitudes, the required energy transport is what gives us uh, all the winds, uh, rainfall, including hurricanes, tornadoes which come out of the system and they force the ocean and in the last chapter we talked about how ocean is mechanically forced to, to produce available potential energy as well as move heat in the thermohaline circulation up the temperature gradient from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere and the atmospheric response is to move the ITCZ probably one of the theories and move energy to the south to compensate for the ocean transport north okay so that's climate at its best right greenhouse gases trap the outgoing long wave earth system components have different response times as we saw the feedbacks are uh, very critical and they produce this huge uh, rich spectrum of climate variability and climate is some kind of an average weather as we said so global warming always produces weather changes as well for example rainfall becomes more extreme so if you think of a monsoon season for example total rain may decrease but the season may get squeezed and you get more rain when it rains this can have very different impacts uh, as well on agriculture floods and so on water plays obviously a very critical role in earth's climate and er ocean absorbs most of the energy so this is just a brief uh, summary of things then we'll move on to other time scales